right, welcome to the Abu Garcia Revo Top 5 Baits and Techniques of the Month of March. Let's go. It really seems like pintail baits are key now. Been seeing a lot more pintail baits at the top levels of bass fishing, especially over the last two or three years. A couple weeks ago, Dustin Connell won the MLF Red Crest Championship, fishing two of them. And a couple of weeks before that, MLF Bass Pro Tour rookie Drew Gill won the Rayburn Invitational with one. Then what's up with these bad boys? What's up? Well, first a quick pintail baits history. As far as I know, pintail baits started in the U.S. with the Castaic Baits Jerky J and the Hog Farmer Spunk Shad. Maybe the Rain's Bubbling Shaker came here from Japan before that, don't know. The Jerky J mostly got known as a swim bait on a jig head or on a scrounger type head, and the Spunk Shad became best known as a chatterbait type trailer. We also had baits like the Yamamoto Shad Shape Worm fished on a drop shot. Well, it's definitely gone way beyond that now because the number of pintail baits is a lot more and people are finding out ways to use them. At Redcrest, Dustin won it fishing a Damiki rig or a jig head minnow rig with a Rapala Crush City Mooch Minnow, which isn't available yet, and a Crush City Freeloader, which is available, on a scrounger style head and a spinner bait. Michigan's Ron Nelson finished third at Red Crest, partly by fishing a Z-Man jackhammer with a Jerky J on the back. Jacob Wheeler finished sixth with the Mooch Minnow, and right behind him was Gerald Sporer, and one of his baits was the Missile Bait Spunk Shad. Now, Drew Gill won that Rayburn Invitational fishing a Big Bite Bait Shaking Squirrel Worm on a Nico rig. And keep your eyes peeled for more pintail baits being used because more and more are coming out now. And hey, they work. You also have true pintail baits like these. And the ones with split tails like these. Should we expect more crappie looking bait, pintail baits like this and this? Yep, because the bass are like, Yes, they are hungry. Number two. What exactly are jerk baits now? Just five years ago, they were cold water baits that you mostly fish slow. That whole jerk, jerk, and agonizing pause thing. Unless you're Kevin Van Dam, who's like, You know what I mean. But since then, we've had two major jerk bait deals. One is Hank Cherry, who won two back-to-back -back classics, 2020 and 21, fishing a jerkbait. That was mind-blowing, but Hank is really a jerkbait savant and really opened people's eyes about that bait. The second major deal is that we had the slow burn of Garmin Pan Optics turn into an explosion of forward-facing sonar. And one of the first baits in figuring that whole forward-facing sonar thing out was, of course, the jerkbait. Now the reason for that is because that bait has a good sonar return, but maybe more importantly than that is that it suspends so you can work that bait and see how the fish are reacting to it without pulling it away from them. So we've got those two things, plus our newest Bassmaster Classic champ, Justin Hamner, who's another jerkbait hammer, or Hamner hammer, and caught most of his classic winning fish on one. Now, if you're counting, that's three of the last five classics won on a jerkbait. Yep, classics are early in the year, but that's never happened before. Interesting deal is that Justin won it fishing a little shallower than most, jerkbaiting brush piles in four to eight feet. So instead of just cold water slow baits, are jerkbaits now way more versatile? Have they always been? Are they now shallower water, faster baits for fishing around cover? Seems like it. A lot of good new jerk baits have come out and even more are coming. Hey, we even have a jerk bait now that backs up. You know what they call that thing? For the funky cold Medina. Almost my man tone. Number three. Run for your lives. Everyone run for cover. That's the way. 
If you listen to some people talk about forward-facing sonar, they might convince you that Chicken Little deal is where we're at. Nuclear Holocaust time. Run for the hills, batten down the hatches, save the women and children first. But not exactly, man. Come on. Turning on one of these units didn't suddenly make all the fish in a lake get dumb. It didn't suddenly make average fishermen great. So it didn't make a cake out of cupcakes or a steak out of shad or something like that. Anyhow, the evolution of forward-facing sonar in bass fishing continues driven by some of the best minds playing the game. We've seen forward-facing sonar go from brush piles to open water to back to the bank, stumps, trees, rocks, you name it. And we just saw it used in the Bassmaster Classic just to pinpoint casts. Now, winner Justin Hamner and runner-up Adam Rasmussen just used forward-facing sonar to pinpoint their cast to cover. Meaning they were using it to be as efficient as possible, which is what forward-facing sonar is all about. Maximum efficiency and accuracy. I mean, not everyone is Bob Lee Swagger. Seems I heard about a shot like that being made not too long ago. Said the guy's name was Bob Lee Swagger. Now, a bunch of guys in the classic were using forward-facing sonar to do some version of that. And so does pretty much everyone who uses forward-facing sonar anywhere other than open water. But the one thing that made Grand Lake, Oklahoma such a kind of unique example of that is all the trash fish in the lake. So many catfish, drum, white bass, and whatever else. Trash fish. It was too inefficient to try and figure out which ones were bass, even with forward-facing sonar. So it became all about fishing the bassiest cover. There was still a lot of trash fish in and around most of that cover, so making an accurate cast and hopefully getting a bassy reaction from a fish was the name of the game. Where is forward-facing sonar going? Where will it end up? Honestly, we have no idea, but it's fun finding out, man. It's changing fast and... Don't, 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 don't believe the hype. Number four. Well, 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 how the turntables... How the turntables have turned back to the late pre-spawn, I guess. It is the later pre-spawn in the South where all the major tournaments have been happening. And guess what? The same baits that work every pre-spawn are catching them again. No need for that forward-facing sonar panic, peeps. Gonna run them down real quick. Flat side crankbaits with their tighter wobbles are known as early season colder water shallow baits. And guess what? They've been playing again. Here's a couple that showed up near the top of the Bassmaster Classic standings. Cody Huff finished third at the Classic, partly fishing the Ott Defoe designed Rapala OG Tiny 4. Lee Livesey and Corey Johnston finished fifth and sixth at the Classic and both of them fished the new Six Sense Flatside, the PD-4. Brandon Card finished 14th, and one of his baits was one of those new Yozuri 3DRX flat cranks. Now you see that jig Brandon had there. Most of the top 10 at the Classic, including winner Justin Hamner, also fished a jig. They were all 3 8 to 3 quarters, and most opted for a half ounce. Everything from skipping jigs to football jigs didn't seem to matter. And of course, another early spring standby is the bladed jig, better known as a chatterbait, which we'll get into in number five. But before we go there, the next time someone flips out about forward-facing sonar, tell them, We should no care about da Nabu. Dang straight, man. Number five. Here's the deal, I'm the best there is, plain and simple. Hey, if the Z-Man jackhammer was a NASCAR driver, that's what he'd say. And he'd be 100% right. So far this spring, in my own covering tournaments at a bunch of different levels, the jackhammer is the number one single bait used across the board. What I mean is, it's not the type of bait, like a Demiki rig, a jerkbait, a crankbait, or in this case, a bladed jig. It's that specific individual bait, the jackhammer. Everyone throws it, whether they're sponsored by Z-Man or not, and that's because it is the best bladed jig, whether you personally prefer a different one or not. 
Couple quick examples. It was fished by the third and fourth place finishers at the MLF Red Crest Championship. It made an appearance in the top 10 at the Classic. And recently at the Toyota Series Tournament on the Harris Chain in Florida, half the top 10 fished a bladed jig and they were all jackhammers. That's not even close to all the examples I could give you from just this year so far. But it does give you a quick look at how the jackhammer is the dominant bladed jig in that category. Now it's pricey at about $16 a bait. And for that, you can blame the guys who came up with it. That's Brett Height, Morizo Shimizu, the Japanese bait company Evergreen, and of course, Z-Man. Or you can just thank him for it. I tell Brett Height when I see him that I'm putting his kids through college with all the jackhammers I buy. Now, why is it the best? Well, there's too many reasons to list, but the bottom line is it catches them. It's dangerous, man, kind of like this. Don't push it. Don't push it, I'll give you a war you won't believe. That's all I got for you this month. Thank you, Abu Garcia Rebo. Thank you for watching. See you next month with more best baits and techniques. God bless you.